And we are live. Heart and Hope Medicine in full effect. Yep, this is um 12. 12? Yeah. This is 12. 12. Hey, we running through it. Running through these uh, episodes. Uh, episode yeah. 12 uh, are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube for the video version. Uh, just go stream that. You can catch up to it. I know y'all like to binge, so y'all can binge the uh, podcast Facts. if y'all ain't keeping up with it, which y'all should be. Yeah, it's your favorite series anyway. So just go ahead, be interactive, comment, like, share, all that. Do all that. Um, so this podcast is called Don't Quit. Um, and I give you like some some backstory. Um, pretty much. Uh, so my my grandma has cancer. Uh, pancreatic cancer mm-hmm. and my dad has stroke cancer and I don't know I've, I have been in this uh, season of just like basically uh, just trying to encourage them to not quit um, and just even encouraging myself to you know pray without season and just continue to speak the things that I want to see and things like that. So um, we came in here. Uh, I let them know today. I was like, "All right, uh, <laughs> we're gonna um, go to Plan B because I ain't really feeling that one today." So yeah. we went to uh, Plan B, and that was uh, "Don't Quit." Um. So this is just a um, encouragement to. The believers encouragement to non-believers just don't quit um i would like for you to become a believer because that's that's what gives you the ability to be able to sustain um through all the trials and tribulations yeah. um that will be thrown at you um but just don't quit um it says don't get weary and well doing don't quit no matter the obstacle um don't quit you know it's the moment that you quit that's the moment that you don't allow for nothing to go forth. Like you give up, you know, you don't allow for God to do anything else after that, yeah. you know, because one thing that he gives us is will. And it's crazy, but like our will is like, he gave us will and it is, it's, it's a lot basically, you know, like, will is the reason why certain things is going on you know because we have the will because he gave us the will he gave us the power and stuff like that so he's such a just god that he does not even go he does not go past our will like he don't be like all right well you know he has all power he can do whatever he want but he'd be like all right well if you don't want to set me then it is what it is yep you know and that's the crazy part you know so I just, you know, would like to encourage people, you know, to just keep fighting. No matter what your fight is, just keep fighting, you know, yeah. keep fighting the right fight, the right fight. But uh uh any um fighting things that uh I know we big on boxing, so we like to, you know, talk boxing all the yeah. time. We love yeah. to see fighting stuff, whatever like that. Um, but is there like uh, something that you could give the people about um, fighting, you know, or like something that you have seen recently, you know? Um, I would say fighting against yourself. Like, um, I would say recently, I uh, like y'all know what happened with the last, the last, uh, in the last podcast we talked about. The single release we talked about save me you know and that was a great it was a great thing early on but this week i literally been fighting against my thoughts and emotions like as far as everything that's been going on because it's been a lot of things going on and uh i've been kind of you know putting pressure on myself like i gotta get better at this i gotta get better at that i gotta get better at this and i was watching a sermon and it was by Christine Kane. I don't know if y'all know who Christine Kane is. She is one of the lead pastors of Hillsong. And she was talking about how, you know, sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to 
be approved by man in and be in the light, but God has to um to be developed by to be discovered by man in the light, but God has to develop you in the dark. And she began to talk about how, you know, back in the day when they take pictures, they had to go into the dark room and be developed. And if the wrong light was shed, the light was shed on on that picture prematurely, it would destroy the picture. And that resonated with me because I've been fighting with the idea that as God continues to propel me forward, that I have to be perfect. And the fight for me is is intense because it's all mental. It's not anything that I could physically just manhandle and just get out of my way. It's it's mental. And I, I told my wife earlier this week, like I'm getting I feel so much anxiety, so much pressure to be perfect because in, a, in the coming weeks, I'll be going to Atlanta and I got to be on the TV show and it, it's going to be live and I have to perform and I'm going to have to perform like three songs that that night. And I've never done it before. So it's a lot of pressure on me. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect, to be great. But all in all, the, just the fact that I'm continuing to push, continuing to grow, continuing to allow God to shape me and mold me and not quitting on it. Because ultimately, I had a choice of whether or not I wanted to go on the show. Like, first of all, that's a blessing in itself because people pay to go on that show. I didn't have to pay. It, it was just offered to me. Come on. That's the favor of the Lord in itself. But I had a choice. I could have just said, you know what? It's too much for me. I'm going to just quit. But I know that God has placed me here for a reason. So I have to keep fighting. I have to keep pushing. And I have to continue to be uncomfortable in order to do and be what it is that God wants me to be. Yeah. That, that's big. Um, I had heard some recently that said um, courageousness and comfort can't live with each other. Facts. And um, it was uh, Matthew Stevenson um, yep, on sermon. That, on that that sermon. I, yep. Yeah, the sermon that I sent you. Um, but it literally talked about basically that comfort and courageousness can't live with each other. Like you can't have courage and be comfortable, you know, and that's the the scary part for us, you know, is, you know, not being comfortable, you know, being on on edge in a sense or whatever yeah. like that. Um, like recently I went back to boxing on uh, Wednesday and I promise you, like, I know people see boxers and they really don't understand the lifestyle. They really don't understand how much mental battles you go through. Like, think about it. You have to fight. Like you literally have to sit here and this, this is not, well, you know, some people get in fights occasionally and things like, no, this is literally what you do. Your Everything. job is to hurt the other person, you hurt know, me. and not get hurt. You know, your job is to, you know, win, you know, whatever like that. So just in, even in training, like it's so mental, like it is so mental. I literally got there Wednesday and I was like, bro, this is the toughest sport I have ever done. Like I literally it's like this this is tough like and the thing is not in my mind do i say quit but my mind says continue to go you know continue to fight you know because i feel like god is building something inside of here he's that like he's literally shaping me you know and just even like when you're training when you're going through the training process and your coach continues to tell you hey you got to pick your jab up hey you got to uh Make sure your hands come back to your face. Make sure. And it's like, even you think about God, God always walks you through things and he tell you, hey, hey, you know, you did that good, but you have to make sure you do this. Make right. sure you do this. Make yeah. sure you, you know, watch out for this. Make sure because God can see the full picture. Right. We only are able to see what's what's right now. You know, we see a little bit of the future, but God knows everything that's, that's going to come. You know, he knows the end picture. So it's certain things that we have to go through to develop that character Thanks. and stuff like that. And it's, um, I just read a scripture. Can you pass my phone right there? Um, it said, basically it said, um, rejoice in trials. Yeah. And I'm a, it's, um, temptation. this one says, it's Romans 12, 12. Um, it says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulations 
and be constant in prayer. It said, be patient in tribulations. Be patient in tribulations. Yeah. Like what? It's, it's crazy because when you read in the word of God, it challenges your thought process. You're telling me to be patient in my trial? While I'm going through something, you telling me to be patient? Yeah. Like, what? If anything, I'm like, all right, let me hurry up and get through this. Like, man, ho hopefully tomorrow is better, you know? But you're telling me to literally be patient. Why? Because it's something that is being birthed inside of me. Yeah. It's something that is being developed inside of me. And just like you said with the picture, if I, you know, come to the light before I have developed, then the picture ain't gonna look right gonna you know you, right? i'm gonna be like uh, i'm not ready for the limelight and that's why you get so many people that fall because they didn't go through the process of developing yeah. they didn't go through the process of praying reading the word communing with god Thanks. you know they just want to run out here and stay whatever do whatever they yeah. want the the spotlight but they didn't work for the spotlight you yeah. know they didn't so they, they don't know what it takes to maintain it. Like she, it, it's a point where um, she begins to talk about David and how uh, David was anointed when he was seventeen. David didn't became become the full ruler of Israel until he was thirty seven. So in between that though, that seventeen and thirty seven, God was shaping and molding David into the king that he needed to be. He had to go through periods where he sub he. He, he suffered through wondering if I'm good enough. Had to go through periods where he had to learn how to be a son. Had to go through periods where he had to learn how to be a leader in the way that he was supposed to. He even had to go through periods where he was doing what God told him to. In the beginning, he had to. He went through a period where he was doing what God instructed him to do, even before he was anointed king. So there's definitely a process. And in the midst of the process, if David gives up, he never becomes king of Israel. If he decides that. When, when 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 Saul is in the cave, that he wants to kill him instead of cutting off a piece of his his robe, David never becomes the king that God wants him to be. Yes, he may become king, but he doesn't become king and be God's man. Mm -hmm. Now he's David's man. His will became more becomes more important than God's will for his life and God's will for his city. So the 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 fight, the training, and and everything like that is all necessary. But when you when you do things of your own accord, when you don't submit your will to God's will, you put yourself in a position to for failure, because when you submit, when you when you start acting out of your own will, and your own accord, you don't have the wisdom that is necessary for you to go to that next step. But the, like the word tells us in all our ways, we are to acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. If there was if no one's there to direct your path, where are you going? Mm -hmm. you're walking aimlessly and that's not what god wants us to do he wants us to like we always say lean and depend on him and that's a part of us submitting our will to his and us continuing to push and press and to fight so. yeah it's funny because even um i guess i didn't see it but as you speak now there was this fighter recently uh his name was chris, chris colbert <laughs> and um he was down like for some reason so he's a good boxer and everything like that fast hands fast jab whatever like that but for yeah. some reason i believe he allowed for people on the outside to speak like um basically uh speak of the things that he don't do and he was like all right well i'm approved that i do Gotta this it, yeah. yeah and so he got out of his character and he chose to try to fight somebody in the way that they the way that they fight you know, as far as just standing bra when you fast, so you can be on the outside, stick and move. But he said, nah. So he was down, right? And his trainer told him, Hey, um, I need you to, you need a knockout. You have to walk him down. You know what he did? He did not engage with him. He stood back and he said, like he was up, like he sat there and did not engage because he was scared. He 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 didn't think that he he wanted to survive. You know, he he pretty much quit. Like he pretty much quit in the ring. Yeah. And um I was talking to I had told my uh trainer that and he was like he was like the moment I see he was like the moment I see like if y'all do that is I'm pulling you out the ring. 
He was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna allow for you to fight if you show me that you a quitter. Like if you show me that you like not gonna fight, uh, he said, and then he's talking about, yeah, and I will tell yo, like yo, your mom, he's like your mom, your your wife, your 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 daughter, everybody See, hear everybody. me. Hear me Proof. tell you, like, that's not cool. Like, hear me talk to you, like, why didn't you engage? Like, why didn't you fight? Yeah. It's like the moment that you choose to, nah, this is too big for me. That's the moment that you say, God, you can't do this. That's the moment you telling God that he's not enough. Yeah. Like, that's the moment you dissing God. Like, you pretty much sitting there writing a diss track to God because... <laughs> Hey, you this you know because yeah. you sitting here telling him that what what comes what has come against you is too big for him. it's too big for you it's too big for him you saying god nah you ain't got this yeah you said what you i oh okay well in that case if you think i don't got it then i can't help you Thanks. because the only way that i can help is if you ask mm -hmm. if you don't ask i can't even help you That's can't can't help you got to fight it yourself and it's just that, like, I just want to just, we just want to encourage, you know, encourage y'all, you know, as my, as I see my uh, grandma uh, battling cancer, um, it's, it's rough days, it's days where um, it's good or okay. And it's a battle, it's a constant battle. Um, but it's all depending on you relying on God. Yeah. Like it's all about your reliance and God, you submitting to God's will, you know, and you not giving up, you know, because it's all mental. Like I want to say life is mental. Like, yes, there's physical elements, but a lot of this is mental. Yeah. Like I think about that book, uh, the battlefield of the mind, uh, that uh what's it by uh um, joyce, Meyer. joyce myers yeah. um she got like a bible um and it's literally and then i heard this uh teddy alice say that like boxing is like i want to say like he said like 90 percent mental yeah he was like the you know you go through the thing but it's mental it's what how you feel what you what you think you can do right you know it's literally what 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 more do i have Mm -hmm. you know and it's that moment that you want to give up you say what more do i have yeah. what more do i have you know because god has put it inside of us he has given us strength to fight you know we just have to tap in facts and if, if to me if david david's one I'm, I'm gonna be talking about david all day but david is like to me he is the ideal warrior yes david may have had his flaws but david was a scrapper for real during David's time, David was the only guy who he he basically uh, he headed the the introduction of dual dual wielders. So David was an ambidextrous person. David was one of the only people in the land who could wield swords with two hands at the same time. So as a result of that, he was able to teach other people how to wield those dual swords. That's why the the army that he commanded when he was cast out. That's why they were so great um, is because he taught them those skills. But even him in all his greatness in 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 combat and, and in strategy, there were times where that warrior who was strong and who was always fighting, he had to he had to encourage himself. So when you sit and you say, what do you have left? You got to tap into something more that tap you tapping into something more comes with you encouraging yourself. You got to speak over yourself. You got to speak well of yourself. Speak well of the Lord in the midst of the situations. And he will, like, he will be your strength in, in the times where you feel weak. I can remember when my mom was suffering with cancer. And I would talk to her, and she wouldn't say that she was down or discouraged, but I could just hear it in her voice. Yeah. And some days that would cause me to be discouraged. And I remember talking to Pastor, and he was just like, man, you just got to keep praying and you just got to keep thanking God for what's not, what's coming. That's not even here yet. And I just had to keep thanking God and thanking God. And it would be nice where I was like, man, I don't even know if I can keep thanking him when the situation just looks so bleak Yeah, because she, she had it in both breasts mm -hmm. and she had to get a double bisectomy. So she had it in both breasts and it was, 
my mom was she was super weak man she mm-hmm. lost her hair I, I, my mom had had hair my whole life she would cut it it grow back cut it grow back but this time it didn't grow back and to me that was like that was like the biggest indicator aside from her being weak that was the biggest indicator that like you know something is wrong and it didn't look like she was gonna make it through but me as being the person that i was i didn't know of anybody else who was praying but i knew as her son i had to pray for yeah. her every single day i had yeah. to pray for her and i couldn't allow myself to to fall into this this sadness as if she was already gone she's not gone god has the power to raise her up again and he as he's done she's up well and walking and everything is gone she is completely cancer free to this day Come on. and I firmly believe it's because I did I couldn't allow myself, I didn't allow myself to become discouraged. And I continued to pray. I continued to press. I continued to fight. Even when she, times where she felt like she couldn't fight. I had to fight for her. Yeah. So yeah. It's like that's a fact, bro. Um, because even during this time, like, you know, my grandma's here, you know, so I see her every day, you know, and I can see, you know her in the bed, I can see her not feeling good. I talk with her, pray with her. Um, and I can see when she's by the, see when, you know, um, she's lacking faith and things like that. Um, and like, like you said, like what I go to is I have to continue to pray. Yeah. No matter yeah. what, I have to continue to pray. No matter what I see physically, I have to continue to pray and I have to continue to speak the right things. Yeah. You know, I can't speak the bad things. You know, I can't speak what I necessarily see in the natural. I have to speak with my spiritual eyes. You know, I have to speak the things that I want to see. I have to prophesy over her. You know, I have to continue to strengthen her and things like that. And there's moments where you have to put yourself in check. Thanks. There's like when I first found out that she had cancer and that my dad had cancer it was a blow like i was like you know but um i just everything goes back to to fighting for me like uh i remember i told told past and he was like you know the moment he was like you know you get hit you know you you gotta you know it may hurt you know hit you know but you got to shake it off and keep moving yeah. like you do. Oh, OK, well, I'm coming back, you know. So there is a second, you know, after you get hit where you like, oh, shoot, that hurt it. But it's, what do you do after that? That's 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 what it's about. Do you quit? Do you say, oh, this I can't help. No, that's the doctor said this. Well, that's it. No, you have to be like, OK, well, the doctor said this and it's their job to say this. You know, because they only see stuff through this, you know, they read a book and they see stuff through that book. But I read a different book. You know, the book that I read has all power. The book that I read is of the creator who created that doctor, created all this stuff. You know, so why would I choose to to go with your book? Right. You know, why would I choose to go with your medical book? The resource and not the source. Why would I be like, all right, yep, you you have the final say. No, you are you the alpha and omega? No. no, are you the beginning and the end? No. Oh, do you do? Are you controlling whether her heart beat? Are you controlling whether my dad heart beat? No, no. You know, so why would I continue to continue to believe what you said? Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna be naive as far as like, all right, no, that's not true. She ain't got it. whatever. Right. No, y'all, that's y'all seen it. Okay, whatever, like that. I believe that, but it's not till death. You know, mm-hmm. I. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. You know, I'm going to, until the bell ring, I'm going to continue to fight. Facts. Till the bell ring, I'm going to continue to fight. I'm going to give all I can to the bell ring. Yeah. And then that's, you know, that's it. But I won't feel good unless I continue to push. Yeah. You know, because I have people relying on me. People relying on me being able to tap into God. Yeah. There's people relying on you to be able to tap into God. That's why God calls intercessors. That's why there's intercessors throughout here that God calls to intercede for his people. Yeah. You know, for those people who don't feel strong, you know, those people who don't have the foundation of God 
who don't know God. God charges us to pray for them. Yeah. God charges us to continue to pray for them. He said, pray without ceasing, you know? So I call all the intercessors, continue to pray, continue to pray. Even if you straight, you know, pray for others. Thanks. It's not about you. Thanks. It's not about you. You know, he given us the ability to pray and we only gonna take, talk about us. No, mm -hmm. if anything, I come last, Thanks. if anything, because he know everything that I need. I'm going to get everybody else out the way first. Thanks. Hold it. And then you already know, you know, I add my little two cents in or whatever like that. But you know everything that I need. Mm -hmm. So if anything, I'm going to spend my time praying for others. Thanks. Because we understand that and we know that our prayers, even our seeds, are, we're making declarations over people's lives. And we know that everything that we sow, it shall we shall reap the fruit thereof. So as we're praying for someone else, someone is someone else is praying for us as well. And it's just to me, it's it's like I could, it's the circle of prayer. You know, somebody we praying for somebody, somebody praying for us and somebody else is praying for that. Somebody It's just it's just a circle of prayer. And now we have to know and believe that as we continue to intercede and pray for other people that God, God hears us. He knows and he sees and other people know and see as well. That's why it's 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 important that even as you go through these things that not only that you encourage yourself, but you have the right people around you to help encourage you. Yes. If Brandon didn't have his coach telling him, mm -hmm. don't quit, keep fighting, keep mm -hmm. going. Yes, there's a warrior on the inside of him. But sometimes that, like we said earlier, that warrior can get discouraged. Yeah. If I'm getting hit too much, if my if my punches are coming, keep coming up short, what do I need to do? What direction do I need to take? Do I need to step in a little more? How do I need to, what, what, which way do I need to move, go to slip this jab? Like, it's, it's a certain level of encouragement that we all need from somebody. So you have to be mindful of the people that you connect yourself up with. Like during that time when my mom had cancer, if I wasn't connected up with pastor who Come was on. there to encourage me Come to on. keep praying, to, to stay strong, I probably would have been somewhere crying in the corner. Mm -hmm. And who knows what would have happened as a result of that. But because somebody was there to help me, to encourage me, to build me up in my time of need, I was able to continue on. I was able to continue fighting. I was able to be to be empowered to to be sharpened in that moment because that's not a lesson that is just going to be be relevant in just that situation. No, that lesson is relevant in every situation that could possibly come across in life. Don't quit. Keep fighting. Don't be discouraged. Continue praying. I could use that no matter what situation from as small as God, I need a dollar tomorrow yeah. to as big as I'm sick and the doctor's telling me I'm going to die in a week. Yeah. You can use it anywhere. So you just got to be mindful of the people that you connect it up to in the way that you, you and what you allow them to, what you accept that people are speaking over Come you. On, talk about because it. Because sometimes you can, you can tell, like if I told, for instance, I could tell somebody, oh, my mom got cancer. Well, we need to get funeral arrangements ready. Get out of my face. Facts. Get out of my face. Those are not the type of people that you need around you. Get you far need, from me. You need people around you who are encouraging your fight, who are encouraging you in the midst of the fight. Give Don't you get, some water. Listen, yes. when David went to that battlefield and he was feeding his brothers, they quit before they even fought. They saw the size of the obstacle and they said, I'm done. Mm. I'm done. But David had that the Holy Spirit living on the inside. Man. That was the spirit of God, the holy boldness that came, that rose up out of him. He said, y'all who are supposed to be masters of war, masters of war, y'all scared of this man? But you know what David's mindset was? If God be for me, then who in the world can stand against me? What type of sickness, what type of illness, what type of mindset can stand against me? None. That's the type of mindset we need to have. And you know what you got to do? Go chop off the, that, the, the giant's head. Go chop off the head of that giant. Because that's what that's the type of mindset that God has called us to not weakness, not right. pity, not none of that. Jesus didn't even Jesus didn't display an ounce of need or want for pity in the midst of him going to the cross. No matter how much he was beat, no matter how much he was spit on, <laughs> Come no matter on, how many man. times they hammered that, that 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 crown of thorns on his head. He didn't ask for not one ounce of pity. So why in the world should we? We shouldn't. We need to walk in holy boldness and fight at all at every obstacle that we come across in our lives. Man, even even that, 
when Jesus was getting beat, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He said, you see my mom? Take care of her. Who do that? Who? He's going through it, but he's not even focused on what he's going through. He's seeing the future. Okay, well, I need to let you know this. While I'm going through this, I need to let you know. I need to speak to you. Mm -hmm. I'm straight. I'm doing what I have to do. I'm going through what I have to go through. But I need to let you know that I'm straight. Yeah. You know, and I need to make sure that you handle business on your end. Facts. So it's just, it's all perspective. It's all perspective. You know, somebody could, like, it could be something little that causes somebody to be like, no, oh, I can't do it. Facts. And then it could be something big that causes somebody to be like, oh, can't do it. So it's all perspective. And it could be something like, it could be something big to somebody where they like, oh, that's easy work. Right. You know, it's like when you working out, like when you, you lifting. So for instance, let's be throwing the same weight on the bar, but based off how I feel about myself determines how I feel about that weight. Facts. It's not even a necessary about the weight is how I feel is what I feel like I can do what I feel like my strength is. So if I'm looking at the same weight as you and I choose to be like, Oh, that's too heavy. Then it is too heavy. Yeah. It is because you spoke that it was too heavy. Facts. So now it is too heavy. It's funny because when I used to be working out with true, they used to, they about, 250 whatever like that they up there and um they used to make me lift the same amount of weight that that they lifted and the funny part was it was a challenge because i'd be like i started to speak negativity i was like oh i don't know Man. i don't know but because they were behind me i was like oh i can do it because they encouraged me i was like oh okay and then as i continued to do it i was like this is easy. Facts. This is easy. So it's it's a it's a muscle that we have to continue to work. Facts. It's a muscle that we have to continue to train. Yeah. That we have to continue to train so that we can continue to go through these obstacles. So that we can continue to go through. And, and it's not gonna be all breeze. It's yeah. not gonna be easy. Like everything is not gonna be easy. Facts. Like we're going to go through things. Yeah. We are going to go through things. Everybody is going to go through something. It's not no easy button. Like, right. ain't no, all right, well. Salvation for dummies. Yeah. Button. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm going to skip this trial. Right. No, if you have to go through that trial, you have to go Facts. through it. It is what it is. Yeah. You know, so like, we have to choose to fight. We have to choose to work the muscles. We have to put this mind in check. Facts. This is the mind of Christ. We have to literally, we have to literally put our mind on him. And I'm just sitting here thinking while you're talking about how they did how they did you with the weights and stuff like that. And I'm thinking about how when I was lifting super heavy and I used to research it all the time. And it, I, I, I read this study one time and it talked about how um, you had to put your nervous system under a level of shock in order to progress and get stronger. And I was talking to a, my coworker and I was telling him, you have to put your body under in a situation of progressive overload. So you start at 135, then you put, you put 10 more pounds on it and 10 more pounds on it which each with each set. That way you can shock your nervous system. And once your nervous system goes through that shock, it's able to handle the weight that you were shocked by in the first place. So that's, I believe, what, that's what God does with us is he puts us, our nervous system, spiritually under a form of shock, under that pressure, pressure, under that pressing to get out of us what we need, to get us to lift the weight that we need in the midst of that situation so that once we do endure it have to go through it again it's easy for us and now we we pass that test and now he can put more weight on us do you understand that mm. he wants us to become stronger and that's why he said what what did you say um comfortability is the the enemy of courageousness how are you god wants us to be he, he told us to be strong and courageous so how are we we being courageous still lifting at 135 10 times at each set we not not pushing yourself you're not you don't have to you don't have to to be afraid of anything i'm not scared that this weight is going to follow me i'm not afraid that i can't handle it it's easy to me so how am i pro progressing you're not 
you just constantly doing the same thing, the same thing over and over again. And after a while, what's crazy, and this is how it is in our spiritual life, your body will adapt to that weight and you'll actually start to digress as a result of continuing to lift that same Facts. weight over and over again. It's not going to make you stronger. It's That's not. A fact. You probably become weaker as a result of it because your body will get so used to lifting at 135 that it won't go any further. There's certain muscles that do not get engaged when you continue to lift the same nice. weight. There's certain muscles that don't, they don't they engage. Don't they don't need, you don't need it. Right. Like you literally can lift it without engaging this weight. Yeah. You can literally lift it without, all right, I need this muscle. My no, stabilizer be muscles aren't being used anymore. And that's why, this is why I tell, I was telling it, I was telling dude, I was like, man, because he go to uh, Planet Fitness, Planet Fitness has a lot of assisted exercise machines and i'm like bro you are weakening yourself because now you're not even allowing yourself to use the stabilizer muscles that are necessary for you to to lift the weight and become stronger now when you continuously doing the same thing in christ now you don't even have you don't even need as much word to to stabilize you in the midst of these the the life that you're leading because you're used to it you know the answer to every situation that's going to come up while you're on this level but god is like no i need you to move up and re-engage them stabilizer muscles. Re-engage your desire, your drive, your fire to read the word and pray and seek me so that you will be maintained in the midst of this situation. But like he said, when we look at that weight and we become afraid, you kill your, your progress before you even begin to try. Facts. Right. So, That's so deep. Like the how we see it. You know, literally, if we literally like, oh, no, I can't do it. The moment that we say that, we give that power. He right. said life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yep. So therefore, whatever we choose to put our mouth on yep. has power. Mm -hmm. So we choose to say, I can't. You can't. Right. If we choose to say, I can, yes, you can. Right. Because the power is there now. Right. Because you have spoke. And now the power goes with it. So right. we have to literally watch our mouths. Stop right. speaking over situations before you Go take it to God. Yo. Stop speaking out of your flesh. Stop just saying stuff. Facts. S speak what you want to see. Facts. Stop speaking to what's natural. What's the natural? Okay, yeah, this person looks like they're dying. No, this person looks like they're living. This person is still living. Facts. So I'm not going to speak death over them. Facts. I'm not going to say, all right, well, yeah, we should get the funeral arrangements ready and everything. No. This person still live, living. This person... God allowed for this person to wake up the next day. Yeah. And I I would come in there and be like, uh, yeah. So uh no. If they still have breath, then they can continue to push. They still have some type of will. Yeah, that's opportunity. Hey Nas knew something. He made a song when we was kids. I know I can be well. Hey, I mean, look. He, hey, that's a positive affirmation that we all need to, to stuff like that. We need to speak over ourselves. Speak the word over yourself daily. Um Post it over around your house. Get little right. stickies. Whatever you got to do, post it around your house. Recite that word to yourself every single day. And don't just do that. Don't stop there. Actually get in your word and study. Yeah. And figure out. Because and that's a lot of it is that that's the problem too. Like it's, it's identity. We mm -hmm. need to figure out who we are in Christ. When you are stable in who you are in Christ, you don't have to fear. You're not afraid to do or be do anything that God tells you to do. You 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 look at it and you're like, OK, this is different. But at the same time, you know that because God is behind you, I can do it. Yeah, I can win any battle. Yeah. Any adversary that comes up against me is minuscule in comparison to who God is. Yeah. He holds that little thing in the palm of his hand. And if he allowed it to come to me, then he will bring me through it no matter what. So that nah. and like, honestly, like if we could leave, leave anything to you we we'll just tell you don't quit don't quit don't quit like no matter how hard it get no matter how much you have to put yourself in check don't quit yeah the moment that you quit that's the moment that you're not allowing god to work okay. that's the moment that you are uh holding you are basically entrapping god's hands like you're literally like how can you entrap God's hands by your faith, by your lack of faith? Yeah, that's how you entrap God's hands because He can't do anything. God has all power, but He can't do anything if you are lacking faith. Mm -hmm. If you can't believe, then He will always ask somebody that was sick 
can do you believe I can heal you? Do you believe? Because all he needed for them to say is yes. And even some of them was like, you know, I believe, but God help my unbelief. Right. Being honest with him. Being honest. And he was like, all right, well, I can work with that. Right. I can, I, I can work with that. But the moment you say, uh, nah, I don't believe you can do it. You know, I'm like, all right, well, on to next. I, I got to go mm -hmm. to somebody that um believes. Or I have to wait on you until you believe. Right. You know, I'm going to send people to continue to encourage you to start believing. Yep. You know, so uh, we just wanted to be able to just share that message with message with y'all, you know, um, it won't be as long as our usual podcast, but it will definitely be powerful. Facts. No matter Facts. how much time it, it goes, it's not about that. It's about the power that is released. And we believe that uh, God is, God is behind this, you Facts. know, God is behind this and he can work through five minutes. He can work through 10 minutes. He can work through one minute, Facts. you know? So, we just want y'all to be encouraged. You know, Pastor always say, uh, be encouraged. He always, I have never got off the uh, the phone call with him and he not been like, be encouraged, you know? Yeah. And it's that simple thing. You know, you may not know that you need to hear that, but you need to hear that. Facts. Be encouraged. You know, Facts. we let us not be so high that we can't accept to be encouraged. Like we can't, be like, oh yeah, what you telling me that? No, be encouraged. Cause it's something gonna come against you. Be encouraged. You know, keep keep moving forward. Thanks. You know, so that been uh, another episode of the. Let me. Pray. Oh yeah, go ahead, bro. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everybody that will view this podcast, everybody that will listen to this podcast. Oh God, Father, we just pray right now, Father, that you just strengthen them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, give them the strength to go on, to carry on, oh God. Father, help them to encourage themselves, oh God. Father, help them to speak life over their situation, oh God. Father, help them to understand that whatever they're going through is not too big for you, oh God. And it's not too small that you would not recognize it, oh God. And Father, help them to see that everything that they're going through, Father, is meant to be cast on you, oh God. And it's meant for them for them to go through it, oh God, so that they, they can their their character will be developed, oh God. Their 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 strength will be developed, oh God, that their mental fortitude will be developed, oh God, Father, and that they will begin to see and hear you even the more, oh God. So Father, as we as we leave this podcast, oh God, but Father, never from your presence, Father, we pray that you just keep them, oh God, keep them in your will, oh God, Father, Father, cause us to reject our will, oh God, and accept your will for our lives, oh God, and we just thank you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Uh, that been an episode of the Hope and Heart Medicines podcast. Um, and we just thank y'all. Uh, it will be available on Apple Music. It will be available on Spotify and YouTube. So make sure y'all subscribe. Please, you know, please subscribe. Uh, continue share to share. Friends, share because you don't be selfish about the podcast. If you like the podcast, I'm pretty sure there's somebody that will like the podcast. So Thanks. share, it, please. So Thanks. we just thank y'all uh, for everything that y'all you know do for us, uh, for sending us encouragement. And things like that for sharing the word, you know, for sharing the video. So we just thank y'all for listening. And we are out. Love y'all. Peace. Peace. <laughs>